let us all that we can to build a better future. Oh, I love it. I love it. This Today's episode is pure gold. Because Rachel Maddow, Rachel Maddow decided to weigh in on the Supreme Court decision of <clears throat> keeping Trump on the ballot. Nine to one, nine to zero. Sorry, I said nine to one. Nine to zero. Nine to zero. I mean, that was funny. I wasn't expecting that. A nine to zero decision. A nine to a whopping zero. Z E R O zero. Nine Supreme Court justices decided that Trump should be on the ballot in Colorado and that one state should not be determining factor for every single state. Oh, vote blue, no matter who. Let's let let's let's witness this wonderful event of Rachel Maddow kind of <clears throat> have, 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 having her own little own, own little coming to terms right now because it's like, oh my god. I put all my eggs in one basket, but secretly I'm willing to bet. I am willing to bet that she's excited for this because if Trump gets reelected as president, do you have any idea how great this is for Rachel? Because then she goes right back to her old bread and butter because that was what she talked about during the four years of the Trump administration. That is everything that Donald Trump was doing. This Rachel secret. I, I know, I know, I know you're, you're popping champagne bottles uh, every single night saying, yes, I get to talk about Trump again. The viewers and the ratings will come in because there are so many triggered vote blue, no matter who liberals out there. But I will just leave you with this. There, there's no magic spell. There's no solution that is going to come say from the Supreme court, the Supreme court did. The there was no magic wand, no magic solution, no home run Homer favor of reminding us all of that today when they ruled that Trump will stay on the ballot all over the country. They gave us that reminder today after last week, they made sure we knew it in the first place when they somewhat inexplicably took action to delay all the Trump, the Trump criminal trials except the one they couldn't stop until after the election. There's no magic wand coming to stop this thing. There's no, you know, magic beans that you can. Grow. That's twice you said it. Magic wand or magic beans. You are, you are really, you are really trying to frighten your audience, aren't you, Rachel? Like, oh God, I, I wish there was a magic solution. Oh my goodness. I wish there was something we could do. That's twice you said that. One more time. Okay. All the Trump, the Trump criminal trials, except the one they couldn't stop until after the election. There's no magic wand coming to stop this thing. There's no, you know, magic beans that you can grow here that make some beanstalk take us away from all of this. There's only one way out of this. Uh huh. The Democratic Party has picked its nominee. Yes, it's an old guy. Whoa, old man Biden. You say it's an old guy who is doing practical, normal and popular things as president and who has a lot to show for it, particularly in terms of how well things are going economically since he has been at the helm. The Republican Party is pretty obviously picking their guy as well, also an old guy who, for example, cannot say the word Venezuela and who has no idea. Whoa, 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 hold up, Rachel. I just want to be very clear here. Rachel, 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 Rachel. <clears throat> Biden has a hard time remembering living world leaders, okay? Biden looks confused on the stage. Biden regaled the people of Lahaina about how his fire, how his house also caught on fire. And even though it was only like 20 minutes, he's talking to people who've lost everything or loved ones. The same Joe Biden, same Joe Biden who said, oh, my goodness. Yeah, we got to do something about this genocide in Gaza, but hasn't left a finger. OK. Are, 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 are you sure, Rachel, that that you want to be calling Trump names? I mean, yes, let's face it. Trump has done a lot of stupid things. He's he, he, he even even he's done his own fair share of things that I can laugh at. But Biden ain't no saint. All right. Just one more time at the helm. The Republican Party is pretty obviously picking their guy as well, 
also an old guy who, for example, cannot say the word Venezuela and who has no idea who is the current president of the United States, currently riding high on his party's abortion bans and measles curious virological denialist free associating, he's trying to warm the American people up to the idea of just a little bit of dictatorship from him. And he's getting us ready to, you know, start building camps to hold millions because his advisors say the deportations start at noon on day one. You really know, I see, and, and this, this kind of explains the liberal mindset by why so many liberals are triggered. Why so, because Rachel, you're no better than the people at Fox News with your fear tactics. You're, you're making Trump seem to be like he's the next Hitler. He ain't, he ain't. He's gonna be like any other politician, all right? Trump. Trump talked all this stuff that he was going to do during his administration, and guess what? It's the same kind of policies that was done by previous other Democratic and Republican administrations. The only difference is that Trump doesn't have a neoliberal mask to make things look all squeaky clean. Trump triggers people because guess what? Secretly, a lot of these liberals are just like Trump, including you, Rachel. So you're talking about all the stuff that Trump's going to do and how he's going to turn us into dictatorship. Well, guess what? All presidents have been dictators, okay? We've actually had sitting U.S. presidents, Rachel, that signed the death orders for the Native Americans that were living in the West way, 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 way back in the early days of this republic. You know, we've had presidents call for the genocide of the Native American peoples that were here. Okay, we, we've had presidents declare war. On sovereign nations. We've had presidents oppress the rights of the people. So, yes, you know, everything you're saying about dictatorships, we've seen it before. The only difference is that it was done with a fancy mask of decorum and politeness while the people were asleep, Rachel. Well, by the way, this is a horrible time to pause her face. I mean, looks she looks so evil, like uh Trump, Trump, Trump's gonna get you. The courts are not going to help. The law will be a sidebar to the main decision. You will make this decision. The only way this decision will be made is by you picking one, by you vo volunteering and donating and campaigning and deciding it matters enough to you to not only vote, but to help, to help your candidate try to win. The Republican Party really, really is amazing right now. But the only thing that will stop them is Democrats winning instead. Gee, you're not being neutral here. You're telling people to vote Democrat, but okay. And then, of course, hey, look, I, I, I had I had to bring this up here, right? So big brain genius here is blaming one person. You moron, Harry. It was a nine to zero, uh, nine to zero. Pay attention, fool. Watch the link. And that's our coverage of yesterday's decision. Insurrectionist sympathizer Clarence Thomas ruled that insurrectionist Donald Trump can remain on the ballot in 2024. That should be the headline to which he gets ratioed by a lot of people. You know, you got the, per the persistence. The ruling was nine to zero. You attack the black man figures. Yes. Liberals. But of course, hey, listen, vote blue no matter who. You know I had to get Trump to weigh in on this one. Because seeing Rachel go on this full-on attack by saying, it's up to you to decide who's going to be president. I want to start by thanking the Supreme Court for its unanimous decision today. It was a very important decision. We're very well crafted. And I think it will go a long way toward bringing our country together, which our country needs. And uh, they worked long, they worked hard, and frankly, they worked very quickly on something that will be spoken about 100 years from now and 200 years from now, extremely important. Essentially, you cannot take somebody out of a race because an opponent would like to have it that way. And it has nothing to do with the fact that it's the leading candidate, whether it was the leading candidate or a candidate that was well down on the totem pole, you cannot take somebody out of a race. The voters can take the person out of the race very quickly, but a court shouldn't be doing that. And the Supreme Court saw that. Yep. So there you go. So I'll pull this up here because further response, the people promising to save democracy just got called out for trying to rig the election and take your vote away. FYI, there is no democracy. Shout out again to Jimmy Dore, Chicago's very own. You live in an oligarchy and your vote doesn't matter anyways. This is just one of the ways the establishment rigs elections. They kick people off ballots and criminalize those who oppose them. 
They're doing it all over the world, from Pakistan to Brazil to the United States. It's how the billionaires run things. You don't matter, and your vote matters less. America needs a real revolution. Which, again, shout now to Glenn Greenwald. All nine judges of the U.S. Supreme Court, including Sotomayor, Kagan, and Brown uh, Jackson, reversed the Colorado State Supreme Court's decision to ban Trump from the ballot on the ground that he is an insurrection, saying states can't decide this. And then finally, of course, hey, look, Keith Olbermann, remember that guy? The father of BSDNC, I mean MSNBC, calling on the Supreme Court to be dissolved since they betrayed democracy, including Sotomayor, Kagan, and Jackson. NBC is every bit as deranged as Olbermann is. They're, they're just a little more behaviorally subtle about it, but they're 100% his spawn. Case in point, here's what Keith Olbermann says. The Supreme Court has betrayed democracy. Its members, including Jackson, Kagan, and Sotomayor, have proven themselves inept at reading comprehension, and collectively the court has shown itself to be corrupt and illegitimate. It must be dissolved. See, these vote blue no matter who's sycophants. They're incapable of really having an original thought. These people are not serious people. I want to pull up this one here as well, because look, everybody, our favorite guy from CNN, Tubin. remember that guy who couldn't keep his pants on? Tubin on Trump. Oh, boy. Horrible choice of words there. On Trump's Supreme Court win, there were uh, there were uh, some pissed off justices. Oh, Tubin, lay it on us, buddy. Legal analysis Jeffrey Tubin, who I'm surprised still has a job, noted there were high tempers on the Supreme Court after it ruled Monday that Colorado could not disqualify former President Trump from the ballot under the 14th Amendment. There was a paradox about today The Supreme uh, at the Supreme Court. Tubin told CNN anchor John King on CNN's Anderson and Cooper 360. In a clip highlighted by Mediate, uh, Mediate uh, they were unanimous, which is, in controversial cases, unusual in the Supreme Court. However, there were some pissed off justices there. You could tell from the paper the opinions were written on. Okay, so the three justices didn't dissent, the three, uh, the three liberals, but they really went after the five for saying, for uh, giving a roadmap for how this law should be uh, applied, instead of just saying what Colorado did was wrong, he added. So, yeah, thank you for laying in your two cents. Jeffrey, I don't know how you got a job there, buddy, but it feels good to me and for all of you as well. You should you should be enjoying this as well. Every single one of you should be enjoying this because the liberals were hoping so many vote blue, no matter who people who are afraid that their old dog, Biden, who doesn't have really that much of a dog in him, would have an easy pathway to the White House. Well, that's not how it works. That's not how it works at all. Unfortunately, uh, many of these liberals are now coming to terms with the fact that, oh, no, the system doesn't work. It's not working in our favor. So now what's going to happen is they're going to ramp up the fear even more. They're going to be sending out emails and doing posts and making status updates on their social media saying why we have to be afraid of Trump. They're only going to tell you why you need to be afraid and not what Biden or the Democrats are going to do for you. And this is how abusive relationships work. See, the abuser, and this is corporate media and the Democratic Party, are now coming at you, the voter, saying, please give me a second chance. I'm sorry I hurt you. We got, we got a real serious situation, and I need your help, and only you can help me. But see, this is where you have to tell your abuser no more. Because the Democrats, they don't like you, they don't think about you, and they don't respect you. And the same goes for the Republican establishment, too. I've made it very clear how I feel about both parties. Both parties have manipulated Americans for decades with the help of corporate media. Now, Trump versus Biden. I'm not excited to see the 2020 rematch of the century happening again in 2024 because it's two old men fighting over a cold bowl of soup. This is pretty pathetic. And it's very sad in this day and age of our nation. We're a global superpower, and this is the best we can do. These are the best and brightest. But see, Jimmy Dore is correct. Misty Winston is correct. We don't have a democracy. We don't have a republic. We don't have true representation. We have oligarchs who are owned by billionaires, and they enact laws and legislation to benefit them. And Trump is part of that system, too. But this whole attempt to get Trump off the ballot is pathetic and wrong. Trump, like any other candidate, has a right to be on the ballot. And as I said in previous other segments in relation to this story, I've interviewed Greens and Libertarians and Socialists and Independents who are running for federal or state offices who were kicked off the ballot by both Democratic and Republican lawmakers. Voters have a right to choose who they want. And as I said on the show before, the Republican voters made it very clear who they want. They want Donald Trump. 
That's who they want. They don't care about January uh, 7th or January 6th, whatever. doesn't matter. doesn't matter anymore. They, they, don't, they don't care about that. They don't care. What they care about is getting their guy into office again. And Trump has already successfully won. All right, we'll see how Super Tuesday plays out. But I'm willing to bet, I am willing to bet that Donald Trump wins and it will clinch the nomination. It, it is now a foregone conclusion. I'll be surprised if anything else turns out differently. And I will say that on the show here for tomorrow's show. But I don't think Nikki Haley has a snowflake's chance in Vulcan's Forge of walking out a OK. But people like Rachel Maddow, people on MSNBC or CNN or any of the vote blue, no matter who sickle fans on social media are going to tell you that you have to be afraid to hell with that. You don't have to have these people control you because these people have Trump living rent free in their head. And I just got to say this again. Democrats are probably secretly hoping Trump gets elected in office because he's good fundraiser money because it's all about the dollars. Same thing for Rachel Maddow and anyone else that was so triggered by Trump from 2016 through 2020. He's good for the views. So you know that Rachel's going to be happy because guess what? At the end of the day, if Trump wins in 2024 in this election cycle, she will get more views than she did in the four years under Biden because it's good revenue. It's a good cash flow. These people who tell you to be afraid, they tell you to be afraid because it's what they're paid to do. But they can't offer you a solution to make your life better. And they won't inform you or empower you on how you can make your life better. And this is why we need independent media. This is why we need to break away from the two-party system. This is why we need to have citizen ballot initiatives. This is why we need to stand up on our own two legs and break away from this system that has been corrupting us for decades. But it's wonderful to see the meltdown, though. I, I, I have been laughing at the remarks on social media. Does that make me a bad person? Eh, kind of. Am I kind of hoping maybe secretly, privately, in my most private moments to see another liberal meltdown like we saw in 2016 when Trump got elected in office? Kind of. Kind of I am. Because I was told by so many of the vote blue no matter who people that Biden's going to fix America. And you'll see. Well, I'm still waiting. Unending wars unchecked corruption, abuse of power, nothing fundamentally changing. Well, according to my invisible watch, you know, time has run out and voters are going to decide who's going to become president very soon. Can't wait for the DNC convention here in Chicago. It should be quite entertaining.